As the price of oil has been obliterated over the past few weeks, even the stocks of the best run exploration production companies have been crushed. Take Pioneer Natural Resources. That's a pure play in the Permian Basin. This area is practically overflowing with crude. Now, we love the Permian, and we love that longtime former CEO Scott Sheffield came out of retirement to run this business again. He's been making some very smart moves. But if the price of crude keeps falling thanks to worries about a potential uh, worldwide slowdown, should we be more careful? Still, this one absolutely does get cheaper as it goes lower. You know, I often say that some companies don't. So let's check in with Scott Sheffield. He's the president and, C- and CEO of Pioneer Nuts Resources to get a better read on where his company's headed. Scott, welcome back. Thank you, Jim. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you. Uh, so I didn't, uh, retirement didn't suit you? Wanted to come back to work? No, the, the board uh, came up to me after Tim retired and asked me, uh, do you want to come back, Scott, or we're going to have to go outside and hire somebody? So I came back for the investors and for the employees. Well, uh, you were for the when you retired, I said you were the best there is because I figured once you retired, I can say I don't have to worry. But you are. Okay. And what's amazing is is that you very quickly got decided pure play permian, got rid of Eagleford. I thought maybe you could even get more, but you called it around the yard. Don't worry about yes. it. And then took this balance sheet and made it seem like you know a blue chip balance sheet as opposed to just going wildcat. No, it's it's still the best balance sheet among all independents and. Um, the first thing I did when I came back, obviously, was focused on the call structure, mm-hmm. drilling, completion facilities, and, of course, overhead. And sad to say, we had to go through uh, a reduction in force of about 520 people. So we, we bled our GNA per BOE, which is a measure that we all measure right. overhead in an um, oil and gas company. It's down to the low $2 range. And so, but it's been the tough things, but I'm very excited about the future. Well, no, that ratio is not the only one I like. Uh, uh, oil to gas and also price you get. Uh, versus o- o- on the market. I mean, you're making the most per barrel, and you've got the most oil of any of the, of any of the companies. Yes, our slides show that in our IR presentation. Uh, we, we started this, I was on your show several years ago about the export ban, and so a lot of the work that we did about seven years ago, all of our crude moves to the Gulf Coast, right. and we're getting Brent pricing. So we're exporting 98% right. of our crude. And I want people to know, like, why do I like a guy like Sheffield? Okay, he came on the show, and he said, we're going to be exporting oil, and I, I thought that was insane. We weren't making it. We were just uh, it is such a deficit, but you saw it coming. Now I want to know what's the next big thing because the Permian prices, judged by this Occidental deal, are ridiculously high versus what you paid. Yes, uh, we paid essentially nothing for our acreage, <laughs> uh, less than $500 per acre about 20 years ago. And uh, Oxy, based on a, a report coming out of RS and some sell side analysts, they're paying somewhere close to fifty to fifty-five thousand per acre for the Delaware to get in the Delaware and expand it. So the average price of deals done about thirty-eight thousand per acre um, over the last two to three years. But Oxy stepped up and paid fifty-five thousand per acre. Well, in the comp school, you actually addressed the question, uh, the question of M and A, and you said that Anadarko was kind of right, but you're really not betting on a lot of M and A going forward, are you? Probably not the next two years. Yeah. I, I think the majors do want to buy. The pioneers of the world, the conchos, the parsley energies, uh, but they're running. Uh, they set out these big targets. Right. Exxon's going to a million barrels a day. Uh, Chevron's going to nine hundred thousand barrels a day. And over the next two to three years, they're going to be depleting their inventory. At right. some point, they will have to come and make strong offers to the independents. Well, I like Chevron very much, and I know that they have a war chest, and they've got a great balance sheet. Even if they had bought uh, Anadarko, they were going to be able to buy back stock. But when I think about it, the Permian may be, um, let's just say it's so lucrative, and there's so much oil there that maybe the, the window's going to be closing if they don't buy with oil down here where it is. Yeah, I know it. And uh, there's only, um, it's been stated, there's only four companies that can get to over a million barrels a day. Right. Pioneer, Concho, Exxon, and Chevron. And so only four of, those, four of the companies out there can reach over a million barrels a day. And- and- but, and you should explain to people that natural gas is not a great asset to have. You, the, those companies all have good. But natural gas, what is the price right now? And can any company make money out of it? It is negative, sad to say. Uh, <laughs> so you've got to explain to people because I, people I don't believe me when I tell it it's to them. It's free. So <laughs> and, and gas in the Permian, we have some probably the cheapest electricity in the Permian because of all the windmills. We have zero gas prices are actually negative. Uh, Pioneer's taking our gas to California, so we're not seeing any of the negative prices, but a lot of the independents are seeing negative. We're waiting on the Kinder Morgan line. It's coming on in October. 
We're waiting on the next Kinder Morgan line coming on October of 2020. The problem is we got five to six crude oil lines coming in from Permian to the Gulf Coast, but we've only got one gas line. We need to build another four to five natural well, gas Well, Mexico lines. wants it. You got one in Mexico. I mean, that would save a, but there's a couple companies like Apache really could use a natural gas line to, more to Mexico. Yes, but they have a new president down there, and he's talked about yes. uh, whether or not he should be importing as much natural gas into his country. Uh, he wants to spend money and build his own refinery down there. And so I don't know, the, right. the problem, that, that what's going to solve our natural gas industry is getting more LNG products. Yeah, right. You got to get all We need to ship it out, just like we are crude oil, yeah. and just like we are propane, butane, ethane, yeah, we're and a products. Lot of, a lot of butane export. One last question. You were visionary. You told me all this could happen. I, I was skeptical, but you made me a believer. How big can we be now? How big can the United States be? How big can the Permian be? Okay, U.S., a little over 12 million barrels a day of right. oil. Versus six, what, seven when you told I, me that I we could? i say five, five to six. No, but no I'm saying when, we, when you came we're, on, we were five to we were six, five and you to told six. me we could double. We could double. It's going to 17 million barrels a day. Most of it will come from the Permian. The Permian's going from 4.2 to 8 to 9 million barrels a day. 17? 17, yes. But so, it'll be over a slower pace. So if we get tensions in the Middle East, I should be more uh, a little bit less concerned. It's not going to be the be-all and end-all of this world. No, exactly. We don't have to rely on the Middle East again, hopefully, even though we're still sending aircraft carriers right. and troops over there. Well, 17 million. Look, uh, anybody who doubted you before is dead wrong. I don't doubt you now, I'll tell you that. And welcome back, because you are a terrific executive. No, thank you, Jim. I appreciate it. Absolutely. All right, that's Scott Sheffield. He is the pioneer, and he's the head of Pioneer Natural Resources. Listen to what he said, 17 million. He was right last time. Everyone was laughing. They're not laughing now. Mad Money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.